Recipes for Technical Trading Success in Cook's Kitchen. Hey, Kevin Cook here, back with another edition of Cook's Kitchen. And we're going to talk about how to buy the dips, because there is an art and possibly a science to buying the dips. Well, if you if you know how to program an algo, there's definitely a, a a science, a formula that you can input, but how can we beat the algos at their own game and be able to buy these wonderful dips like the one we got in, uh, you know, in the past week or so in the NASDAQ 100? Well, first of all, it starts with being prepared for when the market starts selling off. And, uh, you know, I was preparing my people about this market weakness here. You look at the NASDAQ starting to break down, um, you know, and then we're closing on these these lows around uh, twelve seven fifty. Here was uh, here was the update I gave my people on February twenty sixth. I said market on some support, waiting for the March flows. In other words, Monday was going to be March first, and would we see buyers rush in? Um, but so what I tried to do is say, hey, I think there's more downside. I think that Nasdaq. You know, twelve two fifty was in view. Nasdaq. I'm talking about the Nasdaq 100. So here was a chart I showed my people on Friday, getting ready to buy better dips in stocks we liked, like the Trade Desk, Shopify, Square, Baidu, Nvidia. Um, and yeah, I'm still buying the tech leaders. You want to buy them when everybody's tossing them out, when all the latecomers are being forced out of their positions. So. On Friday, February February 26th, I like to draw these green boxes because I'm not a trend line guy. Anybody who's followed me for a while, I do not use trend lines. I think they are mathematically absurd. What I like to do is look at bands and levels and zones of support based on history. And that equates to lines, horizontal lines that go back and tell you about where the market has price memory. And so what I chose was this area in here, I thought would be extreme enough that you'd, you'd hit all the algos would hit all the stops, flush, flush out weak hands down to 12, 250. Uh, I think I showed a, uh, an S and P chart here too. Let's take a look. Yeah. So there's the S and P, um, you know, ideally we, you know, the, the S and P could have gone in, in a bigger correction, you know, could have followed the NASDAQ down. Uh, below 3600 but but I wanted to be a buyer you know to 3700 okay so we come in to March and what do we get well we got you know we got something of a of a decent bounce um you know so here's uh you know here's Friday the 26th right here and yeah March 1st market gaps up Seems like everything's good. And then it fades away by Tuesday. By Wednesday, you're breaking 12,750, which, you know, the, not a time to be an aggressive buyer because you're breaking that 12,750 on the NASDAQ. It means better bargains are coming. Well, how do you get them when the market, you know, bounces like this? And then, you know, here you are, um, you know, late on Friday. March 5th, the market bounces and you're like, ah, oh, I missed the bottom. I missed the bottom. <laughs> and then you come into Monday, this Monday, March 8th, and you get another nice flush. Okay. So, so here's what I was telling my people on, on March 4th, I was still telling them, Hey, weak hands must still be flushed. And, and you want to set up for that, you know, so we were looking at Shopify, the trade desk, uh, lots of different ideas. Okay. So here's how to do it. And I, and I'm going through this because my son is a new trader. He's uh, he's 27 years old, and he's all hyped up on Reddit and GameStop and all this stuff. But I, you know, I said, hey, while things are when everything's green, you got to be ready for the morning you wake up and everything's red. And so he had a couple of those mornings. And I said, but you want to be a buyer? How do you buy those flushes? And the way you buy them is first of all by knowing they're coming. And second of all, by placing limit orders or market if touched orders. Um, so let me widen this out a little bit here. Because we want to look in detail to some things that happened in uh, in some of our favorite stocks, like a, like the Trade Desk or Shopify. 
because you can't, what the algos will do is they'll force it down fast, hit all the stops. And unless you're ready, unless you're an active trader and you're right there and you know how to pull the trigger um, when you get to a decent level, you know, you're not going to get them. You're not going to get the shares. So let's, let's use the trade desk as an example. So um, we were buying on this day, March 4th, uh, buying below 650. Now, you know, I sent an alert out. I said buy between uh, 620 and 640. Um, and so some of my people got some in the 620s. But look what happened the next day. So here's, here's Friday, March 5th. And the trade desk plunges to a low of 561. Now, the only, now if you had a plan, like, yeah, I'm going to jump in there and I'm going to buy some, you know, 570s or something, and I'm not going to panic, um, you know, who knows if you would have done it. But if you would have placed a limit order and said, Let, let's say we get some kind of wild stop flush, you know, put a buy limit in, you know, at 600 at 570 if you want. Um, and a market of touch would be, hey, if it hits 570 and I don't get them because the algos grab them all, um, I go to the market and maybe I get 575 on a big stock like this. The other great thing about, about the trade desk is look how it held up even when the NASDAQ fell back. So let's see if I got uh, the, the chart I showed my people last night. Um, let's go to Taser here. I said this, this this relative strength in uh, in the trade desk is out of control. Look at this. Here here it is. Look at these look at these candles. They're all dojis, you know, lots of wicks. And on a day when the Nasdaq retraced, um, you know, which was uh, which was Monday, you think, oh, we're going to make new lows to Nasdaq twelve thousand. No, the, the trade desk just saw buyers and, uh, you know, and then they close it above everything. So, you know, that's why you have to have your orders in for those flushes, because otherwise you're not going to get them, especially if you're not, if you're not sitting right at your computer and you haven't been through one of those firefights before, you know, you're probably going to panic and think, oh my God, the trade desk at, you know, is going to 560. What's next? 500. But if you were, but if you had a view and you were prepared you know, then you're doing it right. Um, I'll show you where I set up. Uh, my son wanted to buy AMD. So we're looking at AMD. Well, I told him, yeah, AMD is, is a great alternative, alternative to NVIDIA in artificial intelligence. And you were, you had this sort of big, you know, dispersed, you could call it a bull flag, you know, consolidation. Yeah. And maybe you're a buyer at 92, but when we started breaking down here, um, you know, he want he thought, well, I'll buy it at 85. I'm like, no, just wait, because this market's going to get weaker. I said, just put in a buy limit at 75. And he did that, and it worked for him, because he got filled here on uh, on Monday. The low was, you know, 74. Um, you know, it's not racing higher, but you're in at a good level. And then if the correction heats up, semiconductors take another hit. You know, then you're then you're scaling in even better, say under 70. You know, so this is uh, this is how you need to be prepared for the flushes. It's a game, okay? Uh, 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 buyers who have FOMO chase stocks higher, chase them into a bubble. They buy puts to hedge. The algos will run things higher than you can imagine, and then they get to turn around. And when they get the momentum to the downside, they can flush everybody out. And you just, you want to be ready to catch some of those. You want to have your buckets and your mitts ready to catch those fly balls um, when they come dropping to you. Uh, and the way to do it, if you're not sitting right at your screen, is set some buy limits, you know, well below the market into that deep correction territory. Because if the NASDAQ goes down 10%, it means some of your favorite stocks are going down 30%. And you got to be there. All right. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen.